right, let's take a look at the fixed income side of the equation. That's important too. Uh, there was only one strategy in 2009, and that was that what we'd seen as far as the collapse in credit would reverse. And so this is a chart that takes the BAA corporate yield, compares it against the 10-year U.S. Treasury, and tells you how fearful the marketplace is. For perspective, that spike there is the Great Depression. Here's where we were, the Great Recession, as they're calling it. I think it was kind of a panic, but that's another topic. So we expected that those spreads would narrow, and as they did, we'd get great capital gains opportunities coming out. And that was indeed the case. It was a remarkable year, a historic year for bonds, actually. And so if you look at high yield, up 58%. Emerging market bonds were up 34% or so. You see corporates up about 20 The only place you really didn't want to be in the bond market, the U.S. government's treasury bonds. And so credit definitely outperformed. How did we do? So we divide the portfolio right now, and this is not static. We'll change it. Right now, we're trying to figure out the inflation trade, and so uh, this may change. But for the moment, we're at 65% on multi-sector. That was basically corporate. That area of the portfolio was up 22.5%. Our intermediate term slice, uh, which is basically the PIMCO total return fund, was up 15%, which was pretty good. And our high yield manager exceeded the equity portfolio returns even, up 44%. So the Barclays Ag, the enemy, benchmark, you know, if you're competitive like me, it's the enemy. The enemy was up 6%. WNA was up 26% gross, 25% net. After all we've been through, pause for a moment of reflection. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I don't think we've ever had clapping before at the State of the Union. Um, all right, so let's talk about the long-term results. Now, the absolute results are not wonderful, and I expect them to be higher, but the relative returns really are something to be proud of. On the equity side, we've been able to compound money going back to 02, basically at 6% net of all fees versus the S&P 500 at 3.6%. That's a great spread. Uh, if I could retire on that, I'd be happy with it. On the fixed income side, Dimitri, on the fixed income side with Duncan Williams, on the fixed income side, uh, we've been compounding money at 4% with the Barclays Ag coming in at 5%. And so we're a little behind there. Remember, we got into corporates early, uh, which hurt us a little bit in 2008. We got paid on them last year. I expect to close that gap this year. It's extremely important to me that you all understand how we view returns. It is wonderful to have these returns, and I'm proud of that. But what's meaningful to us at Waddell & Associates is what this means is that the probability analysis we've done on the financial plans, these kind of returns over a benchmark over time, take all those plans and put them ahead of schedule. So it increases the probability that those plans are successful over time. And at our retirement date, what would make us most proud is that we had something like a 99% batting average on seeing the financial plans be successful. That is much more meaningful to us than returns, but we're proud of these nonetheless. So it's important to have them in context. All right, let's talk about what we see. 